It is season three, and that will be the show 23, which means we have a lot of new cards a tier list. I don't want to waste your time. I want to get right onto the lists, talk about our set two and set three content, and uh, really go through the players I think will be the best at each position. First of all, I should quickly shout out Showzone. Check out the link below to my most updated tier lists, and uh, you'll be able to see these as I update them throughout the season. If you bookmark the page, you could check this out anytime. But I don't want to waste any time. I want to get right into it. I've done like five takes of this video and uh, I've rambled on a lot. So, catcher. It was a bit of a more, I don't want to say pay to win. I hate that term. But a tougher to fill position unless you had a lot of stubs in season one. So, if you were someone who's playing season two, you probably were using 95 monthly word Carlos Santana, Mike Napoli, amongst other players who were not too hard to obtain. Because the big boys like Mauer and Schwarber were very expensive and tough to get. Season 3 now, we have some not too hard to obtain big boys and some pretty solid middle of the road catchers. Like Kyle Teal and Blake Mitchell who are in the draft pack are pretty solid. Gary Sanchez and Team Affinity I think is very solid for a 97. And all of these big boys aren't going to be impossible to get. I think a lot of people will eventually get Adley through collections. Elias Diaz can be earned an all-star game program. And uh, Sean Murphy is ranked and Will Smith is uh, a not too expensive diamond duo. So uh, I would recommend moving towards set three catchers unless you really like Mauer or Schwarber. And um, save those big boy stubs for elsewhere because these guys are all the same level and these guys were way more expensive before. This is Joe Maurer being 200k. I don't know if he is worth that personally, unless you really like him. So we got options here. Catcher, I think, is great. First base lost some big boys like Babe Ruth. I'm a little sad at no more Babe Ruth. Um, I might end up considering wild carding him, but if you look at our top end of this list here, um, the A tier and above is already starting to get slim with first baseman. And uh, obviously you work your way down. There are not many super great lower overall guys, in my opinion. So uh, we work our way to this next season. I think this probably leaves four or three-ish main options for people as they really get grinding here. We have some 95 overall captains and stuff, which are good. But uh, for such a power-heavy position relying on good hitting, there isn't that many really good contact power to hitting first baseman. So I'd suggest getting Buck O'Neill, Jock Peterson, as like the not too hard to obtain guys. And then Vlad Jr. or Yandy Diaz are going to be very good. But a little bit harder to obtain since they are through rare rounds and stuff. But you can want one from that guaranteed rare round from the All-Star Game program. I think someone like Vlad is a great safe pick. Um, but as you work your way down, we have something like a 99 Matt Olsen. But he's a little weaker versus lefties. And these guys are good hitters. But for such a stacked offensive position. Or what should be a stacked offensive position. The, the studs aren't really there, in my opinion. Second base is actually pretty interesting because, you know, there used to be some speed guys in Season 1, I feel like. And now in Season 2, you're going to run some speed. It was mainly Hannes Wagner, Jackson Holiday. It's like your go-to good runners over at second base. Um, but in Season 3 here, we got some options like Jackie Robinson, who, funny enough, is a primary shortstop. Had he been... A primary second baseman, he would be a go-to guy there too. Um, but also Marcus Semyon, I'd highly recommend him for an easy to obtain guy. He's a very good card they can just get from XP. Great defense, solid speed, very good contact, and good enough power. And I feel like people like his swing. So I'd highly suggest him. Um, but again, this might be a route where you stick with a season two guy if you have that big bopper you like, like a Corey Seager, um, or you know, other guys like Jackson Holiday I thought were pretty fun. I think it's very reasonable to stick with that here at second base because a lot of the best guys are a bit of a grind like J-Ram and the LED La Cruz because I think these two would be amongst the guys that get used in the long run over here at second base. Shortstop is honestly pretty similar to second base except you throw a couple third base guys like Longo and David Wright there and Josh Donaldson, but we don't really have that type of player here in season three not many guys who are primary third baseman with that secondary shortstop so i think bo bichette is a great guy to grind and br if you want to go that route now uh, if you are just going to be progressively playing jackie robinson will be very good there as well 
And I think the go-to guy is obviously Ellie De La Cruz. I think if anyone can get him, they should get him. And I think this is a, a play where sliding David right over to shortstop, we're using Derek Jeter or someone like a Willie Adamez, who are just primary shortstops, are actually pretty good plays still. I feel like this is a very top-heavy position from last season. Not as much here in Season 3. Um, but as we're working our way down, though, there are some good depth options like Scope and Trey Turner, who are going to be very fun 97 overalls. Um, but as we work our way down, there's a lot of mid. There's a lot of eh over here at shortstop that, you know, unless you're running theme teams and stuff, there isn't really that much here yet. Third base is also pretty interesting because this had a lot of secondary shortstops last season. This is why I think a lot of people stuck with someone like a Chipper Jones because he was such a good hitter and third base didn't offer that much. But David Wright is someone I've really liked so far and I'd highly recommend if you haven't given him a great go yet. Um, and he's going to be a great play to keep there, along with Josh Donaldson, I think. Um, but if you want to go for the Season 3 route, I think a lot of people will eventually get Austin Riley. I love his cards. I think he'll be a go-to third baseman. Also, eventually, Jose Ramirez will be a great one to use. Vlad and Yandy in secondaries will be great. We want power here. So um, any of those big boys are going to be the guys to use over here at third base. But there's some good depth here, in my opinion, in comparison to, say, shortstop second base. Because guys like Josh Young are going to be very solid here. Even White Langford are pretty good for uh, not as go-to guys. So, uh, yeah, third base actually is a good amount of depth. And uh, I wouldn't recommend locking yourself down to wild-carding Chipper Jones. And be open to try some of these guys, especially Austin Riley eventually, Jose Ramirez, Vlad Jr. in the secondary. Because they are some great cards. Outfield in Season 2 had a lot of corner outfield. A lot of top-tier guys like Judge, Harper, Hank, Schwarber, Booger, Dr. Smooth, Stan Musial. And I really think the go-to center fielder just ended up being Mickey Mantle. Um, for a lot of people, they stuck with guys from previous seasons in center field or like a Grady Sizemore because he was kind of easy to get. Um, but I think we have some good help in center field in this season. So if you're someone who was locked into using Mickey Mantle like I was, I'm opening myself up to using other guys because this season has some pretty fun options out there, I think. In terms of center fielders, you got Jock Peterson. I wouldn't suggest playing him there. But I bet you do want to get Dylan Cruz or Max Clark who are good five-tool type players out in center field. And I've heard Max Clark has a Yelich type swing if you like his cards. I know a lot of people do. But I'll eventually be getting Corbin Carroll or Ronald Acuna Jr. and throwing them out in center field. Get that good player with great speed. You know, they're not primary center fielders. They will be great out there, I think. Um, but also, Mike Cameron. Mike Cameron is a great, easy-to-obtain guy that I might use along the way since he's not too hard to get. Um, but there's still some good corner outfield, too. Like, Jock will be great in the corner outfield. Acuna and Carroll will be great in left and right if you want to use them. Hitting with Otani and playing him in the field is viable. There's a few parallels. will get him up to gold fielding. And um, there's a lot of fun cards on the top end of the game right now. And uh, that are, you know, great hitters with good enough fielding and speed. I think I'm going to... My go-to outfield right now with these guys would be Acuna, Carroll, Soto. Get two lefties since the lefties were tough in the other positions. And Acuna feels like a must-use. Um, but there's a lot of great options, even down the A tier, like Kyle Tucker isn't easy to get 99. He's just someone that's a little slower in the field. Um, and I think a lot of these guys down in even the B tier, like Yelich and Austin Hayes and David Dahl, are actually pretty fun 97 overalls to use for a bit. So I definitely tried them. If you are just starting from square one, they will be very solid out there. Starting pitching feels very front heavy in season two. Nolan Ryan and Randy Johnson, I feel like if you have them, you could absolutely keep using them if you're doing great with them. Um, but for a lot of people, there isn't that like ace level pitcher. Beyond that, a lot of these guys just become good depth, like two, three, four starters that, you know, you might not want to pitch in a World Series game as confidently, but you could definitely pitch well with if you like their pitch mixes. Um, even guys like Lance McCullers were pretty solid starters for 97 overalls. Um, but in this current season, I don't I don't know how I feel about the depth of things because I think Donaldson and Page could be that S tier level pitcher, but I also have some questions since I haven't really faced them or used them enough yet. 
and they don't have a track record of being studs before. Um, Paul Skeens could also be up there, but again, I haven't faced him or used him. He's got the stuff that can make him that good. And down here, someone like a Strowman definitely could be an S-tier level pitcher too. And someone like Otani was a favorite in Season 1 as a pitcher, but I've heard some people struggling to pitch with him here in Season 3. But um, as you work our way down now, I don't know if there is much depth in like the middle of the rotation. A lot of these guys would make for solid four or five starters and uh, not as much as like the ace level pitchers. You know, they, they have sinker cutters like Framber and Burns and PV um, and guys like J.R. Richard have the velocity. But I don't know if they all have the stuff to be top level pitchers like Shane McClanahan being like a free to earn 99 in Team Affinity. He's a solid 99, but doubt he's going to be a top pitcher because there's only four pitch pitch mix. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of these pitchers are good. But um, I don't think if you've been playing the game all the time, you're really excited for most of these pitchers. You're probably really looking for the 99s that we got from last season. So I think this could change as you get more diamond duos and other programs and stuff with more 99s. Because the 99 starters are lacking a bit. Speaking of that, McClanahan and Domingo Herman are amongst the best 99 overalls is uh, kind of stinky. And then the bullpen. The bullpen was very good in season two. If you're really going for Mo or Kenley or a role of Chapman or any of these guys in the S tier, you had a lot of great options as the season ended. Um, and um, unfortunately, that's not been the case here in season three. Also, IKF the GOAT. <laughs> He's actually an F tier pitcher right here with Brandon Crawford. I like to put that in there to keep you on your toes. Um, but right now, season three doesn't have great relief pitching. Like, uh, Duvall, I think, is the guy. He's got the outlier cutter. I think that plays great. But beyond that, there's a lot of question marks. Like, Alexis Diaz only has three pitches. He does have a good sinker, four-seam slider. But I don't know how good it is. Devin Williams and Hayter also only have three pitches. Yenier Cano is solid. Um, but, like, not, like, unhittable like a lot of the other guys. Again, a lot of, like, middle to back end of the bullpen guys. So if you're looking for depth there, they'll get the job done. But... If you're pitching in close games, there isn't as much comfort as there was in last season with guys like Chapman and Kenley and Moe and Goose and Dibble and Hoffman. Even some of these guys down here, you could get away with like Dennis Eckersley. So again, I think this will be a position we'll get more and more cards for as we keep going. Hopefully we get some more great 99s as we keep going. It's definitely lacking a bit there. So you probably want to stick with your season two boys if you've been really rocking with them. And if you want to see my teams, for example, this is my set three team I've been grinding the last couple days. I've got a lot of like 97 to 99 overalls. I've been pretty impressed in the grind so far. Um, and I've had a lot of fun doing monthly awards, tops now, and the all-star game program doing them first. And then eventually starting to get other 99s like a Rosa Reina, Kyle Tucker, Vlad Jr. And uh, sprinkling those guys along with them while grinding team affinity. So I think that's a play. If you're starting off in set three, do those other programs first, then start grinding team affinity and working on those team affinity collections because those team affinity collections are actually very valuable to do. Well, last season, there wasn't as much of a valuable reason to do team affinity. And, you know, these guys can offer you some good depth, like Gary Sanchez, amongst other set three studs in team affinity, like Jonathan Scope, Trey Turner, and so on. So it's good to have those options, even if they aren't all 99s. And the rotation, uh, where, you know, I've got a solid rotation from set three. But you see, the pitching is a little weaker on the grind so far here for set three. So if you were to look at my current God Squad, how to make my best team of guys that I would be using here in season three, I think this would end up being it. I like Derek Jeter, may use him out in short again. I'm not sure what I'll do. Um, but in using, like, the other cards, I think I'm going to stick with something like this. I do feel sketchy running Hank in center. Um, Kyle Tucker in the field isn't my favorite outcome. And I will say, Otani is a great hitter. I'd recommend DHing him. And uh, I might end up using him for a bit. Um, but there's a lot of question marks, especially in the pitching. How many more guys will I change in a rotation? And in terms of the bullpen, I don't know how many great relievers there are to add because I have... A really solid back four of the bullpen here in Mo, Loisaga, Eckersley, and Kenley. So uh, we'll see how this develops over the season. But this is my current God Squad and what I'm lurking with. 
Um, as, as you can see, I need more lefties in the lineup. That's mainly why I'm using Kyle Schwarber, and I want an even lefty-righty split, and I don't really have that yet. But if there, there's any silver lining to that, the toughest pitchers to hit, like Randy and John Donaldson right now, I feel like, are lefties. So having more righties and lefties probably isn't the end of the world. But I appreciate you all watching this tier list. Let me know in the comments who you have enjoyed so far in Season 3. Um, there's a long way to go here. So I think there's a lot of fun, great content to grind for. So as I start getting more and more of these players like Carol and Acuna and stuff, the God Squad's got a lot of changing to go through, and I'm really excited for it. But I appreciate you all watching. Have a great rest of your day. Make sure you sub to the channel for some more deep dives and tips. We'll be working on those things as we get going here. And uh, I appreciate you all being patient while I was gone in Seattle for the All-Star break. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you again on next one.